You're watching and listening to Conscious Evolution Media, shifting global consciousness at ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com. Today's podcast is brought to you by Kids Talk Foundation, a global nonprofit organization providing youth advocacy, television programming, and training services in the United States, along with comprehensive medical and educational services for the developing world, most recently in Kenya, Africa, where Kids Talk Foundation provides a feeding program, medical care, and educational services to over 1,300 young people each day. Please help our youth and place your donation. Go to www.kidstalk.org. Are you in the entertainment industry? If you answered yes and you want to promote yourself, your passion, and profession, check out Creative Independent Artist Magazines at CIAartists.com. Endorsed by Kids Talk Foundation Worldwide. You can hear shows from Real Coaching Radio TV Network while on the go with Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher is a free news and talk mobile app available for your smartphones, smart TVs, and cars. And when you download Stitcher to hear shows from Real Coaching Radio TV Network, you have a chance to win some money. Downloading is quick and easy. Just find Stitcher in the App Store. Download it. It's free and just takes a few seconds. Then, during registration, hit the promo code box and enter. Enter RCRN to get automatically entered to win $100. The latest episode of the shows will be waiting for you in your favorites. You'll get access to lots of other amazing shows too. Always available to you on demand. No syncing. It's Stitcher Smart Radio. Don't forget to enter promo code RCRN when you register at www.stitcher.com slash RCRN. Today's man needs to be whole, more than just providing financial security for their relationships and families. Join us as we explore the social conditioning that has and is systematically disempowering men. By becoming awake and aware, we can reverse that conditioning, especially for the boys. Here are your hosts of the Radical Man Internet TV show, Dr. Grant Cruley, Sensei, and Coach Steve Talk. Well, hello and good evening, everybody. This is Dr. Grant Cruley, my co-host, Mr. Steve Toth, and we have a real good show and a lot of information ready for you tonight. How are you, Steve? Oh, I am, after my diabetes scare, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amaz you amazing that, that, <laughs> that, you know, you had some health issues lately and yeah. so am I. We're kind of doing it in. We're synchronized. We're in tandem. <laughs> if you don't know it, folks, uh, I just uh, all of a sudden was diagnosed with the breast cancer. Uh, they cut it out of me. It's all gone. And uh, it came and went uh, real, real rapidly. And then all of a sudden, last week, I got news from Steve that he was dealing with his diabetes. So he, he and I literally are in tandem, and it's, uh, I think it's <laughs> significant, and, uh, and it will be a good thing for reflection tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So um, before we begin, because I'm sure Steve and I got a lot of stuff we both want to share with you, uh, I had a gentleman named Andre who reminded me uh, that I had, I had promised to show how to do Psych K. And I, and I apologize because I, I, with everything going on, I, I actually forgot that I promised that. And just to let you know, Psych K is a methodology that is proven by science for imprinting or creating a new subconscious program directly into your subconscious mind. So instead of just saying an affirmation over and over and over and over again, within five minutes, you make it fact in your brain. So let's just do it real quickly because it, it isn't hard at all. And basically, I want you to just sit up straight, folks, and... Uh, just without thinking, cross your ankles. You know when you're going to cross your ankles when you're sitting in a chair? 
uh, usually, the, uh, like in my case, the left always goes over the right. It might be different for you, but whatever is the most natural, just do that. And then I want you to just, without thinking, if you were to just cross your hands or your arms, you know, just cross them, which one goes over the top, the right or the left? And whichever way is the most natural for you is almost 99.9% .9 of the time the correct uh, sequence. And then, so if your hands are like that, I have my left over my right, or say, let's say you're right over left, then I want you to intertwine your fingers and then just drop your wrists down into your, uh, into your lap, okay? So this posture immediately, uh, by intertwining your fingers, crossing your wrists and your ankles, you intertwine all of your neurology with the right and, he and left hemispheres of your brain. We call this posture whole brain, okay? Now, within about a minute of sitting here like this, the right and left hemispheres of your brain and all your neurology and your total body unite. And that's a state of real power. Then, all you do, it, when you want to put something into your subconscious mind to change your life or your behavior, uh, sit straight and lower your eyes about 45 degrees in front of you. Leave your eyes open. And then you say out loud your affirmation. Make sure the only trick with an affirmation is you always use only positive words because the mind will reverse any negative words. So if you say, I, I don't swear anymore, you will swear. It works in reverse. So what you would say is, I always choose correct and proper English, or I always speak with proper English. Or if you're uh, stressed, you, you would say something like, I, you wouldn't say, I, I don't get worried about things anymore. What you would say is, I'm always calm and relaxed, and I take life as it comes. Okay, do you understand? Now, all you do, you keep your eyes down, you're holding your posture, and you say that out loud for a couple of minutes. A total, we need a total of five minutes. And after about two minutes or so, usually what I do is I set a little timer. I use these little timers like this thing. And then, you know, for cooking. And then I will say that in my mind, I continue to say, but I, I say it silently to myself with my eyes open, looking down, nothing else changes. And then after a little while, I will, and you, you don't need any special amount of time. I'll close my eyes. I keep my eyes on an angle down, but I will close my eyes and I'll say it out loud. And then with my eyes closed after a little while, I'll say it silently to myself. Now here's the trick. As soon as your little buzzer goes off and five minutes have passed, you take your hands and unfurl them and you put your fingertips together like this. At the same time, uncross your ankles and put your feet flat on the floor. And when you do this, you will be um, locking in the program into your mind. Just like when you save something on the computer and it's saved, that is how you save it in your mind. You do that for five minutes, and then that affirmation is actually now a subconscious belief in your mind. And when and I, I do this extensively. What it, you can do, you can rewrite your behavior, how you feel about life, how you feel about your body and your health, how you feel about anything. And it'll absolutely work and it's uh, backed by hard science, okay? That is Psych-K. It's really that simple, okay?
So I just wanted to make sure that I kept my promise to Andre and to all of you because Psych K is now used by all of the most brilliant neurologists, uh, you know, uh, all of all of them, everyone that I know of, and also the big business gurus like Je John Asaraf, that's Bob uh, Bob Proctor. That's all they talk about. Psych K, Psych K, because it'll it'll work for you 100 percent. Okay, so onward and upward. Uh, I want to turn the floor over to to Steve. I think he's got some awesome stuff that he wants to share with us tonight. <laughs> well, I do. I'm um, actually just a few minutes before we started the show. I uh, it just came to me that um, what's really great about our shows and and that we both of us, you and I, are, are the type of people that we walk to talk, which is different from just talking. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how most people would just want to share all their positive testimonials right and never want to show or talk about any of their negative testimonials right yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so guess what I'm gonna share a negative testimonial today me too. Why? Because I'm not activated by it whatsoever. Actually, actually, I'm going to smile through the whole thing, and then I'll share with you my response to the person, and then we can have a little dialogue about it. Okay. And, and, and the reason I'm doing this, Sensei, is because I think these are real-life examples that people, we can be leaders this way in the world, and people can get who we are and what to do in situations when they have several options in terms of how they respond to somebody. Make sense? Yeah, totally. Go for it. Okay, so I received this yesterday in, in an email and um, I just want to say a little bit about it. We, we're not going to share the person's full name because I don't have her okay to share this so she remains just by her first name so her first name is Holly and she was gonna be a guest on my show on the mind body and soul show and as you probably know sensei we we do a lot of work prior to a show with a guest to make sure that their technology and their expectations are managed and this is one of the ways we keep in integrity in terms of how we provide value on the Conscious Evolution Media Network and mm -hmm. how we serve people so we don't just I, I guess what what I want to really say about this is that we don't take this lightly right <laughs> we want people to to succeed and we want them to look at their best on our shows mm -hmm. so when when we scheduled the technology check with her I did her technology check mm -hmm. and it was very apparent to me just in the first few minutes that she was completely unprepared she did not read any of our communication <laughs> uh, she you know she had no idea what the requirements were and she was actually kind of fighting me on some of the things that I explained to her that that these things are important one of them is a headset okay <laughs> and she was gonna she was arguing with me that that she never uses a headset you know on her Skype and blah 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 so we won't go into the detail of that but I basically ended the conversation by saying that these are the things that are need to be and I can be specific about that so she needs to get off of Wi-Fi and get her computer hardwired her Mac she needs to get a headset and she needs to make sure she has the right version of Skype 
so that we can do a video conference. And then I left the conversation by saying, you need to complete all this and reschedule your tech check because as far as I'm concerned, this wasn't it. <laughs> and I let her go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then uh, she and my booking agent, Nan, schedules another meeting with her tomorrow. She's an international guest, so there's a huge time difference between us. Uh -huh. And um, we scheduled it for 6.30 last night, and she was nowhere to be found. So, <laughs> you know, when, and, and you know what I believe, Sensei, I believe that in order to play in any game, the minimum you have to do is you got to show up. Oh, yes. If you don't show up, there's nothing that can be really done. So mm -hmm. then, you know, we just continue to be in our own little bubble and continue our lives as usual. So I instructed my booking agent to cancel the show because mm -hmm. there was no more opportunity to reschedule the tech check because of the big time difference. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So that's it. Next thing I, I know, there's this email. So I'm going to read the email word to word. So it goes like this. With all the interviews I have done globally, this unfortunately was really unprofessional. After 13,000 shows, one would expect some level of integrity that was addressed to me. My clients range from SEOs to celebrities all over the world. If I treated them the way I have been treated, I would have been out of business a long time ago. Hmm. It takes a lot of it takes a lot to impress me. And in this case, I was very much the opposite. It is no wonder coaches get a bad reputation if this is deemed acceptable behavior. In the future, be mindful not to waste someone's time. Last but not least, when Steve wants to do something about his low self-esteem, be sure to get him to contact me. That's providing he understands that a professional coach does not care for arrogance and merely finds it fascinating. Yes, love and light, Nan. All the best to you and the big heart of yours. Kind regards, Hallie, international behavior change expert and spiritual guru. It's a nice title. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to read you my, my response. So, I had to sleep on this one <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't feel like responding to it when I first read it. So, here's my response. Hi, Hallie. This is very interesting. I had to sleep on it, otherwise I have been tempted to respond from my ego, and I know better not to. We would have accomplished anything we would not have accomplished anything useful other than activating each other. I have been running our network for nine years and I can count on one hand the number of these responses that I have ever received. I am not upset with you. However, reading your re email, I get that you are upset with me. I have a deep commitment to getting the truth getting to the truth, which is underneath our anger and upset, which I always call love. I am open to have a dialogue with you about our experience with each other from a connected and loving place. There could be a huge gift in it for the both of us, or we can just move on, but I guarantee that this will come up again. It will just be with different people and it will be more intense. Let me know if you are interested in that possibility. And by the way, this could be a great content-rich live show teaching the public by having us walk our talk. 
good. So have you so, had a response from her? No. But guess what? I'm absolutely complete. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I brought it up on the network, because I don't think I'll ever hear from her. Probably not. <laughs> my, so, uh, you know, as a, uh, from my training as a, in, with the Japanese and Asia, and also with military and so forth, uh, these kind of things to me uh, come down to uh, a simple discussion of etiquette. And they, they, people can dance around with uh, all kinds of uh, fancy arguments about consciousness or who's conscious and who isn't, kind of blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is, uh, if the person is going to be a guest on your show, uh, you have a particular protocol, uh, would you call it your tech check? I went, I underwent it. Uh, I can honestly say when Steve invited me to be part of his network, he took me by the hand and handled every. I have, I have absolutely no understanding of anything technical, and he's always very gracious. But the point, I think the point is, uh, I think you handled it very graciously and nicely. I probably would have been a lot more curt, a little more like George Patton. <laughs> and uh, the fact of the matter is, I think she's uh, uh, utterly wrong. And there's, it's a matter of etiquette. It's sort of like going to another person's home. Uh, if the other person likes your shoes removed at the front door, you remove your shoes at the front door. If they don't mind, then it's fine to leave your shoes on. It's just that simple. So although she might think of herself as a great conscious guru, um, fact of the matter is in terms of what you say, walking your talk, I think her actions uh, say otherwise. That's my <laughs> personal opinion. Yeah, I, I figured, Sensei, you would say, you would say that. The, the thing that I want to just point out to the viewers is just a, just a couple of things is that we as human beings when we get angry or, or get activated by something she probably got activated about the way I spoke or the way I said something and I didn't even realize it in, in the moment mm -hmm. and what we do when we get upset and you know who gets upset of course is our ego our hearts don't get upset <laughs> and so when we get upset just notice this that we always go to the outside world and point the finger so she pointed the finger at me about what being unprofessional and who's being really unprofessional she's being unprofessional and then she says, be mindful not to waste someone's time. Mm -hmm. What she's accused me, ac accusing me of and what she does not want me to do is exactly what she's doing. She's mm -hmm. wasting our time mm -hmm. <laughs> by not acknowledging that there are some rules to this game called Internet television. And you, mm -hmm. can just, you cannot just come in unprepared and trying to wing it because it's not going to work. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it, that's a uh, hundred percent correct, and and I'm sure the audience uh, knows. And if you don't know what what Steve's describing is a projection. So it, when something upsets us about somebody else, generally, uh, what's upsetting us about them is actually something about us. And we get activated because it, it is us and they, uh, we, we project it to, on them because it's, it's very difficult. It takes a lot of maturity and insight to be able to realize that it's actually being generated by us, our own interpretation, our ego or whatever. Um, 
And that, that takes a fair amount of con uh, consciousness. So when someone uses the big word guru, you know, in Tibet, <laughs> in, in Tibet and, uh, and uh, other countries, to be called a guru takes about 30 to 40 or 50 years of severe training. You know, over here, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is a guru. I myself, <laughs> I, I really am a sensei. I'm a lineage sensei. But I am not a guru. Guru is above a sensei by about a hundred miles. So the word is uh, easy to say, uh, hard to do. You know. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, um, hopefully, hopefully the viewers got something, and hopefully our share touched, moved, and inspired some people. That's the most I can hope for. And you know, Steve, I'd, I'd, I'd like to trailer on it now that you brought up such a, that kind of a scenario, um, because I've often been reminded of this as I've gone through my life. It really is a nice thing, and it's utterly appropriate, men, a man, woman, child, whatever, to understand pos uh, position. It, it, it's a part of graciousness. Uh, to understand like when we are a guest, when we are the host, when we are in a, a, a senior situation, when we're in the junior situation. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing inferior about being in the junior situation or about being a guest. It's, but it is a matter of graciousness, of culture, of uh, education, and it's uh, very much lacking in our society. It's not lacking in other societies, in the older societies ancient, that stay more rooted to uh, the elders and so forth. They, they, they maintain their etiquette, and it's, and it, it's a beautiful thing. It brings culture. Uh, so what Steve is describing to me is all too familiar for me. But I but I, I would like to say, you know, reflect on it for yourself because having culture and etiquette and manners and knowing one's place appropriately is a is a thing of uh wisdom. It's not it's not a weakness. Uh, so anyway. Now, I, I, we, since we're in the sharing mode, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm Sensei Grant Cruley, and I'm a wellness specialist. About age, I don't know, age 16 or 18, somewhere in there, in my right chest, by my right nipple, there was a little uh, knot, like a little bead. And uh, I felt it one day, so I we said to the doctor, you know, when I was a kid, and they said, ah, don't worry about it. Some, if some little, probably little fatty tumor or something, whatever it is, if it ever grows, we'll just cut it out of you. So that was way back then. I'm 56 years old this year. And in 2012, in the year 2012, all of a sudden, that little tiny bead started to grow. And uh, it grew to two centimeters in diameter. But it grew real fast one, in one year. And then a little while ago, it started to itch me. It was uh, itchy. So my wife, Tammy, knows a really fine and a very uh, wonderful surgeon. He's, a, a does, he's an advanced surgeon. And uh, my wife happens to work uh, as a therapist for his wife. So we, we approached him, and he cut it out of me right in his office as a courtesy. Because I'm a doctor, he's a doctor, and he's, a, he's just a wonderful man. And uh, after he cut it out of me, he didn't really like the look of it. So he says, I'll, I'll, just as a precaution, I'm going to send this to pathology. I'll call you next week with the result. And the result was it was a cancer. Uh, slow growing, stage one, but it was a cancer, 
And, uh, you know, my father died of lung cancer. My uncle died of colon cancer. As a doctor and as a man, I've seen and witnessed a few people die of cancer. Not an easy way to go. And uh, I was scared. <clears throat> so they scheduled me within two weeks or a week. We, uh, we went in, they, they cut all the right breast off of me and to, because they were worried that there was some little residual cells of cancer in there. And uh, uh, luckily, there was, uh, all the cancer was removed, and here I am, and I'm fine, and I'm, I'm healing. They, they cut me, they cut four lymph nodes out and so forth, but I'm fine. But here, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. So what causes cancer in a guy like me, who's a wellness specialist and supposed to know everything about everything, which is, of course, a bunch of malarkey, right? Uh, I'm just a guy trying to do the best I can like everybody else. And here's the, here's the trick. My cancer was caused by anger. I grew up... Uh, very disconnected from my father, who never understood me. He was a good man. My dad, my dad was a good man, just didn't understand me. And about age six, he basically just abandoned me emotionally. And I grew up uh, as a fighter, very angry. <clears throat> and then that anger manifested that cancer. And someday, if, uh, I mean, if you go to Applied Samurai Wisdom in my, in my coaching, I explain, because it takes a long time to explain, the metaphysics of how emotion manifests in our body. But that's what that was. And in 2012, see, before, just when I was meeting Steve for this show and so forth, I was undergoing some massive trans, uh, emotional transformation and I started to really embrace and take very seriously Tibetan Buddhism along with my 40 years of martial study in, in classical Japanese studies. And I started to do a lot of internal forgiveness of all kinds of things. And it's very interesting, the cancer really grew big, fast. The whole time, we, everyone thought it was just a fatty tumor. But the fact is, it was a cancer, and we did cut it out. And, and what was that? Well, it was like a second chance at life for me to, my body telling me, look, if you really want to walk your talk, like Steve says, and really be a sensei that teaches compassion and the higher road to inner, inner life, you got to end the anger, the resentment, and I've got to make an internal shift. I, got a, I, I know a lot of great things, all kinds of things, but on the actual emotional side, I was still holding a lot of garbage that was unresolved. That's why the cancer shows up. We cut it out. And now the onus is on me to make very sure that I actually and truly change. What do you think about that, Steve, for, your, for yourself in your own life? Does that resonate with you? I first want to acknowledge you for, for sharing yourself, because this is, this takes something. It, people just usually don't do this on in a public platform <laughs> uh, usually people most people want to hide this kind of stuff right mm -hmm. sensei oh yes right, so yes i i definitely want to acknowledge you for your for you to be able to share it with the world and i also wanted to you know ask you a question then we'll oh. i'll share my stuff with the diabetes that I, I find it kind of interesting that because I kind of knew all along since I known you that you have issues with anger. It's, <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty obvious. <laughs> and that 
sensei needs anger management and um, but but something that I I just wanted to connect the dots which is for me and I could be wrong um, that it actually you have this thing about women and, and I can't put my my finger on it completely but <laughs> you you have an issue of of um, I don't know this may be too strong but you have an issue of of maybe respect uh, for, for, for women and um, it's interesting to me that that you inherited a primarily female disease because mm -hmm. breast cancer less than one percent of men mm -hmm. I mean I have never even known any man until you that had mm -hmm. breast cancer and I know lots of women uh, you know that had it some mm -hmm. recovered some had to remove their breasts some of them had to remove both of their breasts mm -hmm. so yeah. I, I think there is something there but I could be off I'm not yeah. a guru no, you're, you're, <laughs> um, I, I would have to say uh, at a very 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 young age because I, I See, I, I'm very, I'm a strong advocate of reincarnation. And I've always felt uh, my entire life, at least by the age of three or four, that I am uh, uh, sort of displaced in time. I belong to a lo uh, an age a long time ago. And when I, as I was growing up very quickly, I became um, hurt and disgusted by the weakening uh, of the men and the guys and the males and the, uh, the lack of guts and dignity and just their utter, it's almost like they're just utter replacement by the women. So it's not so much that I, although it manifests as a, as a, a thing against the ladies, it's actually a reactionary uh, thing to my, uh, my anger or disgust at the weakening and lessening of men in society and their, and their role and place as, a, as a, uh, a place of dignity and leadership and, and so forth. So I, I agree with you. I think it is uh, because every doctor that I know, and as you may, some of you may know, most of my friends are some of the finest uh, and most advanced doctors in the world. No, nobody, they're peerless. And in every case, when they heard that I had breast cancer, uh, they were astounded by that. Um, Pardon me one second. This thing has uh, one second. Are you not plugged into power? I I believe I thought I was, and apparently I wasn't. But I am now. So <laughs> I, think, I think Steve. Uh, I think Steve because my cancer also was estrogen created. So es estrogen is a female hormone. And uh, yes, we have xenoestrogens. Uh, we live in a society and in a, in a country, a whole continent of xenoestrogens, which is a synthetic estrogen. But still, I believe uh, what you're saying. And, I'm, and I am uh, on it. I'm looking at it and I'm uh, contemplating that. But, but it is true. It's, it's always been an issue... Uh, for me, but it's always been pro for the um, for the men. Hence, this program, the Radical Man for Men. Um, I am have been interested in supporting and helping men and their rightful place uh, as leaders in society, at least on a on a real dedicated level. At least by age ten, it's a. Uh, 
it's always been with me. Mm. And I don't, I can't explain that other than like a past life kind of thing, you know. I don't, I don't yeah. know what else to say. Yeah, got it. So, so the good news is that we're being featured on Block TV. Oh. And um, <laughs> second half of the show, um, wow. I, I wish we could have been featured um, for the first half because I think so far we've been sharing some incredible stuff. But let's mm. see if we can outdo ourselves for the second half. <laughs> okay. So, so the so the question I have, of course, for women, breast cancer, and if they have their breasts removed, mm. it can be devastating to them in terms of um, in terms of their self-esteem and. Uh, how they how they think of themselves and there's all kinds of issues with with obviously sexuality and so on and so forth and i don't want to sound like like i'm an expert because i'm not i have no idea i would be lying to you if i said i knew what is it like for a woman to leave you know to to go into oper the operating room and and have one of or two of their best removed i have no clue what that's like okay well, but too. But I, I, I have some, some friends and some acquaintances that have gone through it, and 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 I think I get it. So, what is it like for you? Because you're men, and um, when you lose one of your breasts, it's really not that visible, right? Well, uh, from now on, whenever I look at myself without a shirt on. I have no uh, right nipple anymore, and uh, yeah. so I, I I look at that as a great gift that reminds me that I have a second chance at life. Um, mm. uh, because I'll tell you, while I was waiting for the report, whether they got it all or not, and even though I have uh, world class friends waiting to show me everything to do nutritionally and so forth to make sure no any residual cancer would just disappear. I was scared. My 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 wife's best friend, uh, Sarah Benson, just died only a few weeks ago after uh, first contracting breast cancer, which then metastasized everywhere. She fought very gallantly, and I mean gallantly, and uh, she's just a young kid, man. She was like, 43 years old or 42, something like that, and she died, it killed her. And I was afraid, I'll tell you right now, uh, so I was thrilled to, to know that it was all gone. Um, and uh, as far as what they cut out of me, man, I'll tell you, if you ever went, as you, as you just said, if you see, uh, for those of you listening, if you ever seen someone die of cancer, Compare for me to for them to cut my right uh, nipple and and a few lymph nodes and stuff off of me. I don't care at all. Um, now I'm not a lady. Uh, it would I think it would be a very different thing to have your penis or your scrotum cut off. And I'm sure it really is because we men uh, identify with the family jewel, right guys? I mean, that's like, <laughs> I try to imagine having nothing. I, I can't. So, yeah. but um, it, when you think of, when in my, uh, my case, what I think about is the gift and the message for me to grow to go deeper into life, to go deeper into my personal evolution, and to have the ability to actually do that and not have to have chemotherapy. Of course, I, would, I refuse any chemotherapy. I refuse all radiation therapy, any, any of that stuff. No, no need. As a matter of fact, if you take uh, radiation therapy, the latest, the latest research shows that you can develop uh, another branch of cancer that is radiation resistant. Um, so I well, it destroys, it destroys the good cells, not just the bad ones. It doesn't yeah. know the difference. Yeah, yeah. So, 
um, if you're in any kind of struggle like I, like uh, I, we're describing right now, um, by all means get it cut out and then after that seek out people that are very, very well versed in holistic approaches and I, I would steer away from all of the conventional stuff. That That's my personal opinion. I'm not diagnosing anything, but I, I assure you. I can honestly say from my heart, that's my personal opinion, uh, bar none. Did that help? Did I answer your question? Yeah, 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 you, yeah, you certainly have. All right, so I guess it, it's my turn. Yeah. So <laughs> this thing about, and I guess th this show today could be largely dedicated to men's health. Oh, yeah. And... Um, so we really, guys really need to kind of pay attention <laughs> to, to what's going on. So from my perspective, you know, about two weeks ago, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And, you know, I had no idea that I had this. And um, h however, for the last several months, I would say the last two or three months, I had certain symptoms that was beginning to concern me, but but I I had no way to connect it to type two diabetes. So one of the concerns that I had is frequent urination, and and the reason I'm sharing this openly on the network is because if you're dealing with frequent urination, don't ignore it. I I noticed that I was drinking a lot, like I. I was drinking much more than I have ever drank in terms of iced tea, also a lot of water and Sprite. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to get up usually two or three times at night. So I thought, okay, let's go on the, let's go on Google and see what is this about frequent, frequent urination. What is that about? And not only I had that issue, but but I couldn't hold my urine. So by the time I got to the bathroom, <laughs> I already had an accident or two. Okay, mm -hmm. so now most people, again, would be embarrassed, but I don't really care. So I found this jewel here. This is a natural thing. I don't know if you can read it. It's called bladder control. Okay, it's a, it's a natural, uh, it's not something you get prescribed by, by a doctor. It's everything in here is, is, is natural stuff promoting a strong bladder because I thought I had a weak bladder, okay? But that wasn't it at all. So my daughter was pregnant and she was actually in her last two weeks and this happened with her first baby that at the end of the pregnancy she gets diabetes and she has to treat herself so she has to monitor her blood sugar and and control her diet and so on and so forth so she had all the tools she had the meter and all that and she was at my house on a Monday evening and she just said, for the heck of it, let's check your blood sugar, Dad. So she, <laughs> she, she tests my blood sugar. It came in at 364. Wow. It's like, wow. I didn't even understand, you know, the seriousness of, of that number because I the second time when I was married, I um, I was married to a, a lady that actually had type 1 diabetes. And I went through the whole thing with her. And um, type 1 diabetes symptoms are completely different from type 2 diabetes symptoms. So, so I thought I knew something about diabetes, but I really didn't because it's a whole completely different, different ball game. So... Mm -hmm. So she basically let me know that my blood sugar is way too high and I gotta 
go to the doctor. So I call my doctor. My doctor, in the meantime, has retired. I haven't seen him for probably about a year. So he's not even there. This is a doctor I've been going to for like 20 some years. So I'm like, okay, so what the hell is going on? So I made an appointment with a different doctor. But in the meantime, I mean, they couldn't see me until like Friday. So in the meantime, I got another reading on a on a Wednesday and it was almost 400 so wow. when I when I went into uh, the grocery store I went into the pharmacy and I was talking to the people at the pharmacy and I said can I is there something I can take between now and Friday that will bring my blood sugar down because it's kind of off and the doctor looks at me and says what do you what does that mean what do you mean it's off I said it's almost 400 <laughs> she looked at me and said you gotta go now <laughs> and and that's when I realized oh my god it's it, it's an emergency because you can you know high sugar in your blood that means that your your blood is much thicker than it is normally so yeah. your heart can be affected you can have a heart attack you can go into coma you can develop a situation where your you know since your blood isn't circulating correctly you can lose one of your legs or both of them I mean these are all things that are happening daily because people ignore the stuff so what I have to say to you is don't ignore any of the stuff because when your body is talking to you it's serious stuff and you gotta listen yeah I gotta listen <clears throat> sensei's gotta listen <laughs> because our bodies are really smart they know something is wrong and it's telling us, hey. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and, you know, I had all kinds of symptoms. I had, like, it got so serious that at the end when I ate, I ate lunch. And after lunch, I couldn't deal with myself. Like, I couldn't manage myself. I had to lay down. Mm. I couldn't think. I couldn't work. I couldn't stay upright. I got dizzy. My vision was beginning to be affected by it, like mm. I couldn't see. And I said, well, since I can't see, I can't think. <laughs> there is no sense, you know, sitting or standing up. Let's go get horizontal, okay? But even with all of that, I still didn't connect it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so what was... What was really disappointing for me, Sensei, is here I am, the guy that's been doing this network for the last nine years, and I've been in personal development for the last 30 plus years, and this is still happening to me. It's like, I'm going like, you got to be kidding me. I thought I was, I was in better shape <laughs> yeah. than this. You know what I mean? Oh, sure I do. I, of course I know what you mean. <clears throat> it's a, it's a, you know, folks, it's a fine line, especially for you guys. Here's why it's important for us guys. It, it's just a fact of our upbringing and it's, and it goes back through time that men, uh, we don't pay a lot of attention to our body. In fact, we're trained and we're imbued with the idea to override our body. The other thing is, um, in my case, like I'm a martial person, and you know, like if you just turn on the TV, violence and the idea of being a tough guy that can beat the hell out of everybody and everything, that is always looked on and fawned on and, you know, all this other stuff. Well, 
It, it's, a, it's, it's always nice to be tough, better to be tough than to be a suck that everybody can beat the hell out of, right? But anger is not a natural state. Anger is not natural. Revenge is not natural. Resentment is not natural. These things are created and we're conditioned into them. So it's, it's both. The conditioning feeds the ego. But these things take us away from our heart and away from life. They have nothing to do with manliness at all. They're mistaken for manliness. And then they create, like in my case, cancers or heart attacks or ulcers. My dad was as tough as any man could ever be. He was a boxer. He can my father could beat the shit out of anybody. And he got he they had to cut three quarters of his stomach away because of his ulcers, because of the way he worried, the the resentment he had with for life and, and the world and so forth. Now, in Steve's case, his, he he's, comes in, in a, a diabetes. But like he says, his body was talking to him. Our bodies talk to us every day. It doesn't mean to be a hypochondriac, but you pay attention. And in order to pay attention, you have to be conscious. Not just worried about the taxes, or what Obama, the ultimate ass, is doing, or I just had to throw that <laughs> in there. You know, my favorite man. But not just the world, but what's happening for you. How do you feel? And then as a man, you know, uh, we're trained to like, take care of our family, right? You take care of your kids, protect your wife take care of yourself. We need to take care of ourselves. If we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of our family. It won't help our family if we die of a heart attack or just go down or say Steve's diabetes, if he never caught it, what if he went blind? He has kids, he has all kinds. The whole, this entire conscious evolution. I have a network to run. (laughs) <laughs> everything depends on Steve so taking care of yourself isn't selfish it isn't being a suck it's being awake and aware and in today's world because of the food because of the stress because of xenoestrogens that, uh, which are fake estrogens that permeate all of our products because of all these things as a man, we really need to be integrated and more in tune with ourselves. And get a hold of me, and what I'm, we're going to do is have a, a, a personal interview, you and I, and probably Dr. Brad Shapiro, my student, is going to support me in that. And then we'll see if, if it works for you. Let's uh, go ahead and see what I can do for you. I think uh, it'll surprise you. Thank you, Sensei. And... Don't forget to always come back every Thursday evening at 7 o'clock Mountain, which is where our Denver studio is, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, We love you all. See you next week. All right. Bye-bye, folks. Bye, Sensei. Today's podcast is brought to you by ObesityHotline.com, the silent killer, providing support and encouragement in the prevention of this rising epidemic. Featuring the Body by Vi Challenge, is there a quick answer to the question? Go to www.ObesityHotline.com. You're watching and listening to Conscious Evolution Media, shifting global consciousness at ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com.